All right, so. Oh, they already started. Oh, cool. So what do you think are the win conditions for both teams? Do you, uh, do you think any team has like a size, sizable advantage going in? So actually, I like putting Novos in um, first because. Have we transitioned yet? Yeah, so it was, we're on there. OK, OK. There's a bit of a delay on the street. So I, I like Novos in because so has been taking stocks early. So if you got a heavy, he's not going to really be taking the stocks early. And he has a projectile to keep Bowser out. So he didn't have to worry about his little mix-ups that he has. And Soap has been, from what we've seen, pretty good. He's been taking a bunch of stocks with the team and yeah. giving Centralia a big advantage. And if they can avoid giving that advantage, it's probably going to be I believe good. Centralia was doing pretty well against our boys at the Fiji team earlier. They were. Yeah. And shout out to the Fiji team for joining in. We're just a bunch of friends playing Smash together, wanted to team up together, and that's pretty beautiful. So over here in the match right now, we see uh, pretty much an even game right now with DDD having a little bit of a lead, but them being both heavies doesn't mean too much. But Ooh, um, a, hit a single hit's probably going to take out both of them right now. Uh, DDD, Bowser definitely has the easier kill confirms here, but DDD shouldn't be Ooh, underestimated. And that back air actually takes Bowser out, so they're now Soap's at 3-2. So the thing with crew battles is that stocks are very strategic. Like, if you can end the match with two stocks left, that's big because you get a reset in percentage. You go back mm -hmm. to zero in the next match. So every stock counts in a crew battle. Yeah, uh, I mean, sometimes it doesn't because uh, you can just, like, leave your stock at the very end. And then it's not too big a deal. Like, you JV somebody. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I could have had one more stock. So it's always about taking what you can. Yeah, it's, it's all about like maximizing as much as possible and losing as little as possible. But over here with DD right now, uh, we see a little freeze in the, the game, but I, we hope no one else sees that as Bowser actually here is making up for that first stock loss by trying to take this take at least this second stock by himself. But hmm. yeah, there's a weird duality in a, how this played because like camping is generally good because you got all that time. But if you're just building up a lead and not because building up a lead doesn't really mean much. Yeah. Did somebody say my name? No, no, that was just them cheering out. So we see the Bowser Ooh, tried to stop the recovery, kills. but you can't stop the Penguin out here from recovering. And that is a stock for They're the DDD, but back and forth. nonetheless, Bowser also dies to DDD. So this is a battle of the heaviest, as both of them are at their last stock. The momentum of this game will be determined by who wins this right now. So both players are effectively trying to secure the lead for their teams here. And DDD is going ham right now with all these hammer hits. But Bowser is trying to respond with some hits on his own. Definitely gets him to 55% right now. And yeah, so this is actually pretty uh, pretty intense for both of them. Yeah, they're trading back and forth way more than they should. Uh, I like it. I, I like it. It's definitely entertaining, but it's not exactly the best option both could go for, but it's the most hype. They're keeping, they're keeping it super close. Um, really, it just like depends on one person's right option at the right moment. And Bowser has the lead right now. He is at the advantageous position, and DD is able to safely land on the ground. DD has to recover now, and Bowser is just playing it safe right now. Hmm. I think it's weird that they went to uh, Omega... Yeah, it's it's Pokemon. definitely not the... It's, it's not exactly the best stage for both of them, but I guess... Uh, whatever works. And Ooh. DDD gets that snipe and to the up smash. So no that uh, Soap gets the lead. Soap gets the momentum lead right now. No, 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 no. Soap lost. Soap oh, was the so Bowser. Wow, so it's it's University of Portland getting the lead right yeah, now. Yeah. So it looks like they're sending in Sfeel. Okay. So Sfeel, he plays so, Cloud. Yeah, so the, the goal for Sfeel right now is to just make sure he cleans this last stock up without losing, losing anything. Hands. And the goal for uh, Novos right now is to just take as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got all the time in the world to work with. I mean, both of them do. Though, if, if Novos is able to get a stock, that would be great. If he takes two, that essentially seals the momentum in their favor. And then in the unlikely case that he gets all three, well, that's something else. Make sure they don't, don't forget that seat. All right, so once again, heading into the match, Novos on the DDD and Sfeel on the clouds. Sfeel definitely did a lot of great work in the previous match against Come on, the guys. Evergreen We're College. Hey, and hey, hey. <laughs> what happened? We said it like three times. What happened? They, he's supposed to take his stocks at the beginning. Hmm. All starts all over. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Also, shout-outs to Alpharad for hosting the casual invitational at Frostbite. That was pretty entertaining. I didn't get to watch it. Yeah, that was like the way Smash is meant to be played. <laughs> Feels good.
I don't know, man. This this way we're playing Smash right now is pretty good. But is it the way it's meant to be played? Thinking mm -hmm. emoji. Maybe a little bit. And uh, DDD has two to... Two stocks, two stocks. DDD has to take himself down because of crew battle rules. And we are at 13 stocks of 12. One, go! So again, representing University of Portland is Novos onto DDD, and over at Centralia College is Sfeel onto Cloud. So Sfeel did a lot of great work as Cloud in the last match no, against no. Evergreen College. I love his movement, but just sometimes he likes to throw a B. Yeah, he, he kind of like overextends himself out too much, but I guess it's paying off right now. Uh, his like aggressiveness is paying off right now, especially with him securing a lot of percentage over DDD, and yeah, that no, snipe no, no. Yeah. cleans up the stock without losing anything. So this is the best case scenario for Centralia College. Now the game is really back to quick, even. Really quick cleanup. That's what you wanted to see if you're a um, Centralia looks, fan. Looks like Centralia's feel was cosplaying Smash 4 Cloud over there, but... Who are we playing into this? Who we, who are they sending out? Who do they send? So the, so the cool thing about Pokemon battles is that you can actually choose player orders, kind of like a Pokemon battle. So you can like counter pick each other. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like strategy compared to like like even if regular Smash is already a big brain game, crew battles takes it to another level where you have to you have to like analyze how your opponents send in people first, who cleans up, who's your anchor, and. I think this tournament is the culmination of that for this region. So for you, like, who do you think is the strongest team around here? Um, Tacoma. Th they didn't show up, though. Really? D did they not show up? No, I, I, I'm, I'm biased, but I think it's UW. UW, see, Just I'll because we have Mikazuchi on our team. I mean, I mean, saying as, as a UW student, obviously, uh, you'd be, you'd be saying it's UW, and I think a lot of people here also think it's UW. But care to explain to our viewers what you think is like? Uh, Good about the team here. Um, so for UW, UW's team, uh, if you actually look at everybody here, we're the biggest team. So we actually have the most players playing. If you look at our sets um, that have gone on so far, we've sent out people um, and they've all done well, even though they're not like the best players at UW. So like we're all really well rounded and we get lucky because we live like in the central of the Washington Smash team because most things central on Seattle. Who, who's okay. playing right now? So playing right now is Con, C O N, capital, all caps. I love the, I love the simple name. All caps. Oh yeah, I guess it puts up. Yeah, it's uh, it's all caps on this font right now. You guys can't see that we actually put it in a smaller font over here in our control app. But back to the match right now. Cloud quickly tacks on 77% from the pit. Who is playing this stock immaculately, but goes off stage for some reason over here, trying to make sure that Cloud loses his first stock fast fast without his limit. It's combo up. Practically evens it up. Yeah. Oh, uh, Genkai Wakoru. <laughs> and uh, I guess, like, in this game, limit isn't as strong as it was in Smash 4, but it's still definitely a strong tool. No, you get you get damage, like, consistently. Um, and it, especially, I like, those kill percent. It still offers pressure. And I believe you lose limit after 10 to 15 seconds, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's 15. Ooh, yeah, so that, that definitely puts the, the onus on Cloud to, to like spend its limit as fast as possible to make sure it doesn't get wasted by like expiring. But at the same time, it's still pretty strong. It still gives you a speed buff. It still gives you a fast fall buff. It still get, makes all your moves a final smash. Mm -hmm. But over there, that's exactly one of the reasons why Cloud isn't as good in this game as in Smash 4. Cloud had to use his limit or else it would expire. Yeah, 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 in, yeah. in Smash 4, he could sit on it. The only thing bad... I am it gives use to all his limit moves. So, like, you didn't see Blade Beam happen as much, but just because you have to use it at some point, it's good to throw out Blade Beam. Yeah, uh, that kind of forces Cloud to not camp. Yep. I mean, he will. Eventually. He will, but it makes camping much less effective in this game as it was in Smash 4. Don't take me wrong, Cloud is still a force to be reckoned with. Strong hits. Yeah. Still can kill you really early. Um, what I like about this set right now is um, just this whole match, everybody's just trading blows back and forth. Yeah, everyone's playing aggressive. No one, uh, no one, no one's kind of no significant lead is really being built. Yeah, just percent. I, I like this statement is thrown around, is thrown around a lot, but I, we can honestly say that this this match can go either way. Uh, right now, it can. Uh, I'd like to see how it builds out. Um, the thing is, uh, their anchor, at least what they use it as an anchor uh, in Portland's team, is yeah, who's, who's Everest, anchor? and he's pretty good. Hmm. Um, but the thing is, when you play anchor, is you have a lot of pressure. So even if you're a good player, you still kind of ooh nice ooh, dodge out of there. Yeah, Very that was scary a situation. Almost that was a good limit attempt, but good dodge coming out from Spiel. And right now, Khan has to make sure that he takes this stock. 
Hmm, so what do you think is the win condition over here for Centralia College? The, um, they're doing pretty well right now, but since uh, Portland, uh, University of Portland has an anchor in Everest, how do you think Centralia College can counteract that? Uh, they build a big lead early. They can't keep trading stocks like these. I mean, they can. It keeps it close. But if they keep doing that, as soon as like their better player gets in, um, I don't want to say it slides out because they could still do well against Everest. I, I haven't seen Everest play against most Washington players. But building a big lead at the beginning gives more of a chance. And that's like what you typically want to do against a team that has like a super, super polarizing player on it. Not saying Everest is the most. Uh, I don't know how he compares to the rest of his team. I mean, I've seen them do really well, but... For uh, for University of Portland right now, they are at their um, game point for Khan over here. So one more hit, or rather one more smash move right now, and Khan is essentially out, sending out the next player from University of Portland. So I guess the the what the best thing he can do at this point is try to make sure that he gets that stock, which he does right now. So now the next player from Portland has just has to take one stock rather than two. I mean, unless uh, unless of course Khan makes the comeback over here, which would be the best case gimp. scenario. Get some sick gimp. It's Cloud, you could do it. Yeah, uh, Cl Cloud's uh, recovery is infamously bad. Ooh, but um, it looks like looks like Sfeel is about to JV, uh, JV2 Khan over here, unless Khan has something to say about it. Diving in for all these Electroshock arms, not exactly the best option to do in a situation, especially as he is about to die. And he is now off stage, allowing Cloud to actually take him out with a single hit here. So what does Cloud do? He down tilts him, sending him to the sky, and tries to limit, but to no avail, as he is still at 0%, but Khan lands that really good forward smash mm -hmm. and follows it up with a dash attack only to Ooh, miss. Down and throw almost killed. <laughs> yeah, down throw almost killed over there. Not exactly the best kill move, but at that percent, that should almost kill. It's actually kind of scary because uh, if he gets like one good conversion, he can actually still kill Cloud. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that, that was a... Uh, good job, Steel. But shout outs to Khan for playing until the until the very end. No, no, no. Yeah, he, even behind, he was trying to find his way back in. Uh, wow. They're actually keeping it close. So let's tell some storylines about Centralia College out here. Centralia, one of those uh, schools that not exactly, not everyone exactly knew about, at least like until the previous year. But they recently invested a lot into esports. They're one of the schools here in Washington, like putting a lot of resources heavily into esports. They have their own esports arena now. They have their own esports director. They have coaches, and they even have like a lot of resources to give their students who want to pursue something in esports. So shout outs to them. I think they're like one of the first, if not the first, school in Washington to do like do do that. And this April, University of Washington's doing the same. They're opening a esports arena as well in their, the Husky Union building. So. Esports in Washington is definitely on the rise. Yeah, uh, taken off most other places. Yeah, not just here. It's uh, definitely the wave that's like schools are riding this year, and that's great for all the hobbyists. And we are heading into the match between Mango Man from University of Portland up against Feel from uh, Centralia College. So Feel has already taken out four stocks. One mm -hmm. from one from uh, one from the guy who was playing uh, Bowser, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. So he, he, he's, like, built a lead for himself. He's taken more stocks than he has and given. He, but though he might be cleaned up over here unless he does something, as Mango Man has a pretty clean first stock, but Spiel is responding with a really good uh, string of hits over there that cross slash into up air. And if he actually takes a stock here, that would be an, a great addition to his already uh, insane count of four stocks. If he takes five stocks, that would be, that would be actually really good. Mm -hmm. I actually... Really like how Mango Man is playing. He's pretty close. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So they do trade. Do trade to uh, keep the stocks even throughout. Whoa, whoa, you're hitting the mouse. Trading stocks. Close match. Closest match we've seen. Usually yeah. we've actually seen leads get built, but not here. So, so the interesting thing was that University of Portland was the one that started with the lead. Then Centralia took it for themselves. And now the match is back even in terms of basically everything. So the viewers out there, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, do you think Centralia is going to take it, or do you think University of Portland is going to take it? Both teams are looking pretty strong, or rather, just looking pretty evenly matched here.
Yeah. Uh, you, you can take it. Sure. Uh, uh, are you playing or something? No. Oh, okay. It's not falling, and I'm not even playing. And entering the mic right now is Fire to Pyro. A am I, did I butcher that? No, you said it right. Okay, cool. You can, pr you can say FTP if you want to shorten it. Yeah, but who? Who? Uh, who? How do you spell that? Oh, whoa. Oh, do whoa. Do we need the um, totas at the top or whatever? <laughs> I don't think we can. I, I wonder if they have a player named Uwu. So uh, just for some discussion, are you an Owo person or an Uwu person? I'm neither. That was the right answer. That was the right answer. I know it's the right answer. That was the right answer, my friend. Oh, whoa. All right, so give me up to speed. What are the two universities here that we're So we're seeing with? University of Portland up against uh, Centralia College. Centralia College, a community college here in the Washington area that's heavily been investing into esports. And University of Portland, one of the bigger universities down, uh, down in Oregon. So definitely a tale of two different, uh, different teams from different backgrounds. But their match is going quite evenly right now with both teams just trading stocks back and forth. Yeah, nine to nine. I haven't, I'm usually not used to seeing crew battles be so even. Yeah, and and the funny thing is that like University of Portland started out with a big lead, uh, or rather started out with a lead, and then Central College quickly came back with Spiel, who took on four stocks, and oh, now wow. the match the match is uh, even right now. But as we see here, even even the match going on right now is pretty even as well. Yeah, I saw the me brawler or the me sword fighter before. Uh, now it's not really using the. Oh, maybe it is now. I saw before it was using a pretty regular, I guess you loadout. could say. Yeah, regular loadout. Like the optimal one, I would say. It doesn't matter. I don't know what the down B is, but I do know that you'd probably want Gale in Chakram for your neutral and side B. Uh, this person's running Gale as the neutral B and then Chakram as the... Side Chak B? Yeah, Chakram as a side B. Or not Chakram as a side B. They're using the reflector, my bad. They're using uh, the reflector and the and spin. Yeah, hero spin. Um, no, no, I mean uh, the the spin dash. The oh, that. Yeah. Um, I don't. I just that gonna assume that's a down B. I'm no, not that's too invested. Side B. That's the side. No. They're down B to reflector. Oh yeah, you're right. My bad. Yeah. So so the, so this me brawl is running the lineup of uh, gale gale slash um like a spin spin slash and reflector. Right. And I'm I'm not sure what exactly they're going for for up B. Did you see? Um, I would assume it's hero spin because the thing about hero spin is that if you run that in accordance with or not in tandem with Gale, Gale then Gale has a lot of hits done. It's like almost 64 levels of hits done. So, yeah, yeah. Ooh. see, he went for it right there. He just tried to do the kill confirm, but yeah, I guess he, a bomb he, just he knocked him out. He would have got it if the bomb didn't hit. And as we see, a woe is gimped out of this, so... Uh, yeah, what a way to go at it. Actually, let's actually swap this out. Oh, you have the wrong time? Yeah, and then All right. we got eight over here. I wish we had music. Can we ask him to turn on the music? Yeah, I, I think I think we can't turn on the music for legality purposes. Oh, no, that sucks. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but a lot of streams have to mute their music because of Nintendo rules. I know they have to ban some stages on the stream, like Magic Hands banned for some reason. Yeah. But that's just on stream. Like, for the most part, um, legal stages have legal music. So what was once an even match between Mango Man and Owo is now devolving into a quite the strong lead for Mango Man yeah, over here. Yeah, I just realized 192 is not, that's lasting quite a while. And especially considering that Young Link is a one of the lightest characters in the game. This is uh, mm -hmm. definitely a valiant effort from Mango Man here. One of the patterns I think you see a lot with lighter, faster characters is they, they die early, right? Yeah. But they're so small that you can, oh, right there. Yeah, they're so small that you can barely get a strong hit on them. So you technically just whittle them down. Yep, yep, there we go. And Mango Man is popping off this set. Definitely yeah, feeling himself out right now. And no. oh, that, that was a sick combo oh using the boomerang to extend the combo past where it was. And that is already 70% tech yeah. onto Owo. Owo, Owo is trying to get out of this Owo spot. Owo is feeling, right now. Owo is feeling the, the pressure. Sort of, um, I don't know. Uh, I believe it was 6 to three, uh, six to 0. So yeah, that was uh, Evergreen oh. and Centralia. That was six to zero, and Evergreen was yeah. essentially dominating that set. Oh, sorry, Pretty Centralia. Much this entire Centralia stock was dominating that set. Having a really hard time getting out of this pressure situation. That's it. And Mango Man has taken out 
official after this point mango man has taken out four stocks he is on a roll right now and if he takes more that's going to be great for uh for U university of portland so now they are at six stocks and <laughs> university of portland is at eight now, a two-stock lead might not seem like too much, but in a context of a crew battle, that means everything, especially with regards to momentum moving forward. Yeah, if you're one stock off, like, you can take that off. There's no way. Yeah, you can clean that up. It's very hard to take two stocks without losing, losing one, one yourself. That, like, in a crew battle, that one stock difference is insane. Mm -hmm. At least from a strategic, strategic perspective. And I'm trying to figure out where I put my controller. Hmm. It's fine. I think I'll... Oh, yeah, it's over there. Never mind. We're fine. All right. All right. DDD versus Young Link. I'm just gonna say this right now. DDD is gonna lose. Like I don't even know the skills of these players, but I think that DDD might actually lose all three of his stuff. Okay, never mind. No, DDD is actually popping off this set. He's actually. That's, uh, that is a very quick and early lead. I'm just saying this because I believe that once DDD has some space between him and Young Link, it's gonna be very hard for him to get that space closed again. And now, uh, you Mango, saw, Mango yeah, Man's actually, right yeah, see, Mango Man's actually uh, building this game up back for himself. But as you said before, DDD has to get in. But Young Link is one of the best good zoners in this game. Yeah, definitely. He's got a lot of. Oh my God! What even happened there? All right, That's Gordo, a weird Gordo coming out to cover the landing, which is pretty much what you want to do in that situation, especially against a character as solid as Young Link. Was that a down air? Yeah, that was a down air from Young Link, one of right. Young Link's best moves, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we see right here uh, DDD's weight being put to the test at 170, 180 now. Uh, if you, Mango Man can, Mango Man just doesn't want to give up this pressure. He's been, Mango, Mango Man's been on fire. Mango Man is, like, this is the most impressive pressure I've seen in a while. 214 percent now. Oof. So if if um. If Mango Man takes this, this will actually be his fifth stock taken in this entire crew battle. How how far can this guy extend the lead of his team? Yeah, how he, many people are in each team? Five? No, uh, yeah, five. So All right. he's already, yeah. Mango Man has essentially taken out two people already. Yeah. And <laughs> DDD sitting at 240. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, okay, there he okay. goes. There we go, there we go. So Mango Man has now taken five stocks of his own. He has so taken a third of all of the opponent's stocks combined. That Which is put that into perspective. That is very big. Oh, okay. Uh, I think King DDD or DJ Snore wanted right there. To, he wanted to inhale at ledge to try and maybe catch Young Link, but instead he caught his own Gordo and Young Link got back for free. So the way this crew battle will proceed is essentially dependent on how this match goes. If Mango Man is able to get at least one more stock, that pretty much seals the deal in terms of momentum for oh, University no. of Portland. But that's a bad call on my part. Uh, we see we see that Centralia College has uh, sorry, made the stock lead much narrower with a one one stock lead, which isn't exactly too much. Yeah, they won. I would say that even though they were behind, they did definitely win the exchange of stocks that they had. Because losing one stock to losing two stock, that's pretty clearly it's in your favor if you're the party who only lost one Nonetheless, stock. Nonetheless, huge shout outs to Mango Man for taking out five stocks, one third of the total pool of stocks in this crew battle. So who are University of Portland sending out next? Is it, uh, or sorry, who, yeah, who is University of Portland sending out next? Uh, who do they have left? Portland, guy, Portland guys, who are you sending next? Oh. What? Who are you? Cell? S C E L L. Cell. Super cell. A Pichu main. Huh. Uh, all right. So looks, what is this? Pichu like versus DDD. I don't know. That sounds volatile. Yeah. So while DDD can easily kill Pichu at like almost any percent given Pichu's weight, Pichu's size, Pichu on the other hand combos heavies to death. Yeah. Pichu is the ultimate glass cannon in this game. You thought Mewtwo was a glass cannon. Pichu is the exact same. No. If Pichu touches you, you die. If you touch Pichu, Pichu dies. Yeah, they did, they just said, "Hey, let's give Pikachu kill power, and and that, make him die after he gets hit." Yeah, like let's give Pikachu kill power. Okay, what's the drawback? You die. <laughs> if the opponent knows what they're doing, if, you die. If. Th if that's a big if. Yeah, I remember seeing a tweet that said, um, uh, "What was it? Is it the Might Dan Hibiki and Apakuma one? We're like, I don't uh, think it. it was just some like situational quote. I don't know what to call it, but." 
basically it just said my scene complaining about Pichu while I use the excuse that Pichu dies early while I simultaneously live to 200% because they can't hit me. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Uh, see, you're easy to kill, but if they can't touch you, how are they going to kill you? Yeah, you want giant hitboxes, but you can't really do that without good frame data and good stats. That, that was kind of Mewtwo's drawback. He was a glass cannon, but he was still super easy to hit. And over here we see DDD racking on some early percent over on Pichu. Both sides are at uh, really both, the same percent, but Pichu gets really that spike. Though the That game began with an spike. immediate scramble. Oh, uh, he <laughs> kind of waits for that door, though. I don't think he thought it would hit him. Oh, oh, no! And DDD snipes a stock out of Pichu, equalizing the stock count now 5-5. Five to five. That was an insane Oh my god! DDD. And Pichu, oh. did he die? No, 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 no. Okay, and okay, okay. And he takes okay. DDD to the brick of the screen. Both players are DDD actually... DDD went for the inhale, and it didn't work out. I, don't, I think that DJ might be kicking himself for that one. He was, he was going for the casual special. The casual <laughs> special. The ca Is that the yeah. esports way of saying it? Yeah, the casual special. Though, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, DJ Snore. Alpha Rat's Invitational was yesterday, no! but he <laughs> almost gets the shield break over on he Pichu, and shield breaks him with the death oh But nonetheless, snipes Pichu out with recovery with a Gordo, and Pichu does it recover in time, making this lead go all the way over to the, the Centralia I would College. Like, I would like to mention, I'm pretty sure that this game has taken a little over 80 seconds now. It has only been 80 seconds in this match, folks, and we only are Only 80 seconds to this ready. point of the game, and wow, that was so explosive for the DDD, who has been fearless this entire set. Yeah, I, have, I don't even think I've seen like any good conversion to come out from Pichu. He's just too busy killing. He's too busy trying to he survive. Even, no, he didn't even kill DDD. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, wait. Oh, 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 the snipe from DDD and Centralia College has oh, swung this game back in their favor. Holy shit. DJ just caught the roll. <laughs> DJ just caught the roll. What was that? Yo, can we like give them a stock back for that? <laughs> can we can 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 we can we like roll the game back? Oh god. That was that was brutal. That was a really fast. That lasted 2 minutes. Exposed. That wasn't even they just hmm. Are, are, are we sure? What do we say about that? Are, are we sure the game was the game or was that? Or, or were those warm ups? What was that? <laughs> warm ups. Yeah, those those looked like casual gambits. The casual special. Those were just things that you'd pull off in a casual match. They were like, yeah, we can both kill each other really early. Let's do that. <laughs> what was that? They made a silent pack that said, you know what? We're gonna make. We're gonna both go out in style. Okay, so we are at the last player of the University of Portland. UP starting out with a great lead now. Uh, now at now at uh, three stocks left. Do we have so the opponent or the person that we sent out. Who? I think it might be. Oh, uh, their 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 anchor. Who was that? Who's up? Who's up from Portland? What's the person who went up? Who's the person coming up from Portland? Who's the Portland person? Oh, it's Everest. Everest. Okay, cool. Yeah, Everest the Roy. Okay, so they have now sent out their anchor, one of p potentially one of the better known players in the Oregon region, who is Everest. Yeah, I I played this guy before in Wi-Fi. He's definitely uh, he knows what he's doing for sure. But the pressure the pressure is on uh, the pressure is on Everest right now to clean the stock up as quick as possible. Whereas DJ Snor Snor, there's DJ I do, Snor I do remember seeing them in the round one, and Snor Everest had three stocks to two. He was up against the opponent, and he spent. After he took out the first stock and he was three to one, yeah. he just spent the entire thing just taunting the opponent. Like he gave up free conversions right next to the opponent just to taunt them. Well, well I don't think this is the right time to taunt as the pressure yeah, is on him to equalize it's a this. Lot and, more and, even. and Snore, on the other hand, uh, can basically play around here, just, just try to go for whatever's risky to try to get at least one more stock to shift the momentum over to his team side. So. If Snore is able to get at least one stock here, that oh, would be insane. Oh, he just went for the taunt right there. He went for the taunt. I mean, I can. Wait, in terms wait, of wait, the situation, wait, wait, wait. it wasn't wait, a bad wait, idea. We, we might see the taunt to get bodied here. It wasn't a bad idea because, like, he. Oh! And uh, Everest even evens this match out. Clean. It was clean. I That's mean, clean. He really. I don't. If I was in this position, I don't think a lot, whole lot of people want to take risks there. You know. Yeah. But he didn't. He just went for it, you that's, know? That's pretty fearless. He just... I commend that. Yeah, uh, he went for the roll read and he got it. The Gamer? The Gamer Cat. The Gamer Cat. What an uh, interesting name. Do we have them here? I only see University of Portland twice. 
the, the oh da gamer cap. Da gamer cap. Lucina. All right, we have Roy versus Lucina. All right. Fire, Fire Marth versus uh, Fire Marth versus Better Marth. All right. Yeah. Who's gonna win? Fire Marth versus Future Marth. So, which Marth do you think is better in this game? I mean, personally, Lucina. no, dude, I, I think Plant Marth is the best in this game. I don't know what you mean. Olimar. Oh. Sure. I mean, he doesn't really count, but sure. I mean, take a look at Oz's animations. He's essentially a sword character. All right, so this is Losers Finals, right? Yeah. So whoever wins this match will go up to face University of Washington, Seattle. So that's going to be the boys, Conga, uh, Gyromite. So the question with, U with UW Seattle is that, who are they going to send out out of their 10-man roster? Yeah, definitely. And the question is, will it, will it be as close as this match? Yes. So we are at the, the, the final game of Losers Finals of the Collegiate Smash Qualifier here. The Gamer Cat on the Lucina and Everest on the oh, Roy. So I don't think they wanted the stage. All right. Why not? Why, why I, will be right, I will be right back, okay? I will, be, I will try to get back in like 15 seconds. Lila, it's a fair and beautiful stage. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I wanted to make sure that my phone wasn't stolen. Okay. We are here on the final match. Dead even game. Wow, this this crew battle has definitely been a, uh, definitely been an intense affair between both these sides. Um, just trading stocks left and right. This, the lead mm -hmm. going over to Portland, the lead o going over to Centralia. All this right, has yeah. been quite now, intense. And now this is going to come down to two people, both at three stocks. So mm -hmm. both of them right now trying to find their grounds. And uh, Everest just going in. Everest, Everest right now he's got the lead, but I think that Lucina. Both of these players are capable of putting the other in a very bad spot. Especially uh, with Lucina's consistency. I don't consistency. agree with that. The F smash on the side, that was... Questionable. Not, it was questionable for sure. Like, that was definitely not the safest decision that you could have put out there. Like, if he wanted to, he could have done a jab lock into it if Lucina has that. Oh, did you see the taunt? Yeah. He had the darkest taunt. That was under the platform. You could not see the taunt. But uh, we, we in, in Smash, we do believe in the taunt to get body. Will this will this pay off, or will this just increase uh, Everest's ego? <laughs> oh no, I think Everest is doing this intentionally. Like the uh, psych psychological I play. The, I think the tilt's gonna work. The psychological play. Yeah, it's gonna make the it's gonna make the opponent more aggressive, and he might try to capitalize on the whiffs. That's like the most classic example I think that we can think of here. Yeah, uh, the ga the game the gamer cat actually. Uh, at a very disadvantageous position oh, over here. Okay, up taking the stop. Everest Super takes armor on through whatever that was. I think well, that was a dancing blade. Yeah. And uh, Everest Everest actually puts the lead over back to the oh my God. Portland side, gets one stock, making this a two stock um, situation for Central College. If they lose one more stock, uh, if they lose two more stocks, they are out of Everest this bracket. Everest is just jumping around right now. Oh, oh my God! And another great forward smash puts Centralia College on match point. I would like one more stock, like and they are no, out of I'm, this. I'm looking at Everest. Stone Cold Killer. He's so taunting. He does not show any emotion. This is a real strategy. All, all, all his emotion is in the game right now. If you look right. at him in real life, nothing. Right if now, you look at in game, fiery. Right now, the current outcome of the set that you see right here. It is telling him that him taunting over and over again is validating him. That is a valid, valid strategy with three stocks up to one. He, he isn't just looking at your mechanics. He isn't just looking at your brain. He's looking at your heart and trying to destroy it. And <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a, he, he found that the game was Okay, forward air, yeah. Like pe people, say, pe pe people say games have strategy and games have skill. But Everest has found a third layer. The tilt. I think I think Everest is also going for a bit of a fear factor as well. He's doing some things that I don't think. Ooh. Oh man, that wouldn't. I don't think that would have killed. Everest? Oh, that might be Everest? it. That might be it. Oh, yeah. and the stage spike seals the deal for Central College. Right. They are out of this bracket, but definitely a good effort from them. This crew battle has been one of the closest in the bracket we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, Evergreen 